Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday, September 28th. Over here in the Atlantic, we have reborn Ophelia, just northeast of the Leeward Antilles. Her old center scooted off way over here, and a new center reformed, which means that overall her position has not changed much over the last three days, and she has been moving a lot slower overall than forecasted, though that is mainly due to her reformation. And eventually here, she's got a ridge off to the north, but eventually that's going to slide just east enough for her to to be able to come northwest here in the general direction of Bermuda, enough of a reason for them to keep an eye on her here. If we overlay the NHC forecast, we can see that it's just off to the north-northwest in here where most of the models take it. Been an interesting steering pattern with her. This broad trough out in the eastern Atlantic has been pulling her enough from this direction that she hasn't been able to get around this high. Her old center did, her new center is not, so she'll probably be coming up in this direction as this high eventually scoots off to the east and Bermuda may need to watch her. They have her up to a hurricane by this time. She shouldn't really get to that strong of a storm, but I could see how a category one is possible in the situation since she has now waited so long. The shearing pattern is now more of a favorable one in terms of being out of the south West, which can allow some of these storms, even though they're slightly sheared, to get up to Cat 1 strength, very similar to what Hurricane Maria did in this area. Didn't get very strong, but did get up to Cat 1, so Bermuda should keep a little eye on her, but overall, Ophelia isn't a huge deal. We also have Philippe out here in the eastern Atlantic, and he looked like he was going out here. The path is now shifting because despite this broad trough in here, there's now a ridge trying to build into his north, and then this trough lifts out. This ridge north of Ophelia progresses eastward and catches him and brings him to the west. So we can see him curving off this way. He should still end up moving out eventually as well. Some of the models bring him pretty far pretty far west and even try to move him west southwest in here and then get him into this area which is interesting but the pattern over the eastern United States I think is too progressive for this to be much of a threat and it should still eventually curve out in a fashion like this down the road in here not really that big of a deal now if we look at the global satellite image here What's really going on right now that's making this pattern kind of a yawner for the moment is that this whole area of the world in here if we circle this area of the tropics completely void of convection. You can notice this down in the Caribbean and, and the tropical Atlantic. There's really not that much going on in here and the tropics are fairly dead. That's because all of the convection is currently focused over the western Pacific and the reason for this is because the MJO is now more of a defined signal which means it's being more concentrated in one area where the upward motion is and we can see where it is right now as of two days ago. It, lags takes a couple of days for these values to get out but it's probably out in here by today and it's starting to get out into phase five and six in here which is it corresponds to the maritime continent and the western pacific so it makes sense to see all the convection out here and you can see typhoon nesat which moved over Manila in the Philippines and then is now moving towards China and here going to be a bad storm for them but you can see that instead of flailing around in the little igloo in the middle here where the signal is not very well defined it's now jumping out in here it's getting out into these phases and now it should start its journey around towards phase 8 which is where we need it if we're going to see convection firing in the eastern Pacific and the western Caribbean and that's where all of the models are now unanimously taking it the problem is that it it, it sat around in here for so long that it has now been delayed by about a couple of weeks from where it was supposed to be, a couple of weeks slower than where it looked like it was going to be at the beginning of September, which is exactly why my forecast for activity in the Caribbean has been delayed as well. Once we get this around in here within the next 10 days or so, we'll probably see it becoming a little bit wetter. Now here's the day 11 forecast pattern from the GFS ensembles, uh, 500 millibar heights and anomalies. We can see that the ridge progresses eastward over the northeast U.S. and it's the invasion of the Great Alaskan Trough is what this is. You can see all this blue showing up over the western United States. This is the Alaska Trough that's been in the Gulf of Alaska for so long. Suddenly dives into the western United States here. And what's interesting about this is that this could bring Texas some rainfall. Baroclinic, not tropical, but baroclinic rainfall in here could be possible if this pattern comes true. That will be something to watch for and it would make sense to have this progressive pattern show up if the MJO is also progressing across this, the Pacific so hopefully they'll get some rain but notice the analogs on the right hand side here
If we take a look at the top date, the date that most fits this pattern, 1996, October 19th over here. And remember what we had on that day. On that day, we had Hurricane Lily coming out of the Caribbean, crossing Cuba, and on this day, it was in the Bahamas as a Category 2 hurricane became a Category 3 before leaving the Bahamas and moved on out to the northeast. This is one of those classic storms that can develop in the late season and then curve out to the northeast. Still as a formidable storm, remaining hurricanes even out towards Bermuda here. It's not like the environment is suddenly deadly all the time in October. Lots of things can happen in October. Now if we go to the actual pattern during Hurricane Lily, the 500 millibar heights and surface pressure isobars in here, we can see what we had October 16th, three days before the analog day. We had the trough offshore here, and we had surface high pressure behind it over the east United States, and to itself, like we've been talking about, it favored the mischief where Lily started to develop in here with broad low pressure. If we jump out two days to the 18th, we have this trough now starting to prepare to come out of the Gulf of Alaska into the Pacific Northwest, and the ridge now progressing over the east United States aloft, and Lily is now developing out here near the western tip of Cuba, and she's about to move northeast. If we jump out two more days, see she's now recurved northeast through the Bahamas and is now southwest of Bermuda, and we have the Alaska trough now over the Pacific Northwest getting entrained, and then we have this ridge ballooning up over the northeastern U.S., and with the exception of this little blip of a low that got caught, caught under this pattern here, this looks very similar to the progression that is shown by the ensembles for the next 11 days, which implies that the pattern supports the kind of thing that happened back in 96 when we had Lily developing down here. And the MJO is also progressing into phase one by the time Lily developed in here as well. So there are similarities to this pattern, and I showed you yesterday how even more years from this analog package over here actually show storms that developed in the Western Caribbean and curved out or moved into Central America. So the pattern still favors something going on in the Caribbean. And it's been pushed forward so far that it's like beating a dead horse. But it's still there. As soon as the MJO finally comes back, you see all the convection over the Pacific in here. Eventually, that will get over into this area of the world. The MJO doesn't sit in the same place forever. Eventually, it will get over to this area of the world. And the models are now showing that it will finally stop stalling and will get over here. It would be nice to see this wait until it's November and everything gets sheared in here and we won't have any bad storms. But October, unfortunately, is full of some bad storms in this area of the world, so things can still happen. Folks should still be aware of this pattern. Right now, no big threat. There's not a lot going on. But within 10 days, we will start to see this get wetter in here, and a storm is possible under this pattern based on what has happened before in history. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.